All right, so let's get started up. Yesterday, we got a little bit of progress done. Oh my gosh. Well, that's just me, right? Can't do this alone. It's important. So if we take a look at what we made yesterday. for the first time started working on our save the bees game and this is just our thumbnail for the video so less important right now so this is our little flying bee so we just started with the animation and added a little camera so we could look around so today we're going to add some flying and a few more things around so it's not so empty. Okay. So first things first is I want to take that B, set that to a 90 degree rotation so they're head on. The thumbnail title we are going to turn off So that is not important right now. So if you look at our character, I want to add a little hovering script to our B just to give it a little bit of movement. So go into our assets folder, create a new scripts folder. Create a C sharp script that's going to be, uh, um, call this one hover. Get Visual Studio pulled up, hopefully. Just take a second to load up that, that new script. There we go. All right. So, this is going to be put onto the B itself. So, first things first is we want a Boolean. Thank you. And for now, we want flying to be true because we're just in the air. Get rid of the update function. And go with a fixed update. So it's a little bit more frame rate dependent. If flying. Then, oh, and we want a. This is just going to be for how much we kind of move up and down. Y times math F 
dot sign. Real quick, I just want to make sure I'm doing that right. I'm pretty sure I have. thrust to a uh, public so we can change that should just give us a little bit of a small hover up and down just on our graphic not on our actual character <clears throat> so save that and give that a try oh, there's a completion error so we'll go take a look Too many parentheses. So we'll pull open our game. Hopefully we won't have any more errors. Let's take our B. We're gonna add that script. Not a text mesh pro. So for now, we'll put our thrust to 0.5. So we'll see what this gives us. Well, well, B, are you coming back? <laughs> are you ever coming back? <laughs> so, let's just uh, be selected onto the B, and we'll make sure we don't full screen this after this. We'll turn that off. We're going to place the scene right over here just so we can watch what happens so I'm actually gonna try some a little wonky I know the math isn't right technically but you know, I'm going to do math f dot sign <coughs> of our position and I think that should be fine. So we'll see what this does.
Oh, I, I should probably turn on an object just so I can <clears throat> see if we're moving up or down at all. <clears throat> okay, so it looks like we're not moving quite there. Open a specific file. So going to projects, slime time, assets, scripts. We got a B patrol script over here. So I'm going to set up a little clock that we multiply our force by and then add our start position. <coughs> so go into Visual Studio. We're going to take this transform position Y. Get rid of it. <coughs> and we're, we're going to make this our clock. <coughs> times thrust plus start <laughs> and then this one's gonna be And we want Yeah, we'll set that to a float So we'll go with that. Pull it into our game. All right. And then if we look at our B, thrust is 0 0.5. Let's take a look and see what happens. All right, so it's a little high for right now. Say we change that thrust to 0.2. So probably like 0.1 is going to be a nice little. Alright, so there's our, our flying B. Eh. 0.06. I think that looks pretty good. Mm. It's just a little too much. I, I want... <clears throat> I think that's pretty good. So, if you remember, our character 
is where all of our code for the most part will be so that's going to be this section right here compared to this B which is just the graphics right so our character is right there but if we if we don't maximize this so we'll turn that off if we look at this and are locked onto our character in the scene view you'll see that our position isn't changing at all and if we moved say like if we rotate we're still going to be moving slightly up and down because that's the direction of the character and say we move higher it's now going to do it up there move to the side this is there so that way we can move the character around with a movement script that we'll start right now <coughs> so we can start heading out all right so a couple things i want to do is i want to just start modeling up a park real quick so let's pull open blender so here's our uh, our thumbnail Technically, this is part two, so we'll just get that saved over so we have that thumbnail hanging around. It'll at least be accurate. And we want to start a new general. First things first, get rid of the extras. Nice, good start. <clears throat> So let's just start with a flat plane, a little cube, but an area. Right, so this is going to be the start of our park. Subdivide it just a couple times, not much. I'm going to give a little bit of shape to this area before we start adding anything. This will probably be where we set the, the pond. take any of these squares and kind of subdivide them individually give them a little more shape Just want to make sure we have the right ones. <clears throat> so I add a quick subdivision, not a triangulation. No way, Jose. We want a subdivision. Kind of give it some rounding there. <clears throat> Let's see what that looks like with a couple more viewports. So, oh, and my computer just cracked out. So I say we'll do two two levels of viewport. So 
not very much. And let's start by saving this as our park. And we'll pull it into the map real quick, just so that we can start scaling things around. Always gotta remember that we are a bee. So while this looks like a small little section, it could, you know, turn into a, a decently large bit. It always takes a little longer to import in your models if they are, uh, and you'll notice it's now part two, which is accurate. Take our park, pop it at zero, zero, zero. And let's give some scale to this guy. So, this B would be huge. So, let's take the park and we'll just use the scale tool for now. Let's make a new shader. Oh yeah. Open Blender. Silly guy. Not Visual Studio. What a goose. All right. So we're getting this popped in. And like I said, now we have the accurate part two thumbnail. And so we're creating a new material that is going to be just our basic grass for now. I think that's nice. Just a little bit of metal and make it decently smooth, a little shiny. Rename this to grass. And one thing I'm going to do with that model real quick is I am going to take the object. And this might not look good, so we'll see what it looks like first. So I'm going to shade it smooth. Save that. We'll go take a look at it again. So now that gets rid of some of those harder edges. So if we hit play and look around, we can kind of see the scale of where we're at. All right. Nice. So let's go back into that map. And I want to add a cube. Going to the modeling of this guy real quick. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright. I'm just kind of looking at where I exactly want to put this.
just gonna make it a little too big. Bring it over here. And now you kind of see how it's given shape. There we go. So save that. <clears throat> oh my goodness. That looks great. <laughs> that's cool. I don't know, that's kind of a, a neato effect. I wanna see if that, if that comes through in Unity, hopefully. I don't even care. Well. It appears we have lost our park to well it kind of looks like an air an airplane wing almost I don't even know what happened here all right so first things first is we'll take them the park and we will delete that remove it from the area Get back to our little, little, little guy. All right. So now we'll take our new park 3D object at zero, zero, zero. So now this should scale a lot more properly because there's more than one object in it. When there's more than when there's only one object, uh, they'll try to normalize the two, and uh, that doesn't really help anybody. All right, so now we can scale this park accordingly. We'll do four. Now five. And we will give grass here so now you can see we got this area so if we threw the wing texture on it that'll give us just a basic little shiny water we can work on making a better shader so let's go into the game and just see what our area looks like in comparison now let's also move our park down just a little bit Yeah, it gives us kind of a weird reflection. I dig that. I'm fine with that. All right. So let's add a few things. We want to add up on top of the uh, up on top of this hill here. Oh, real quick, I do want to add to this cube specifically. I wanted to add a mesh collider. <coughs> and I'm gonna tag this as our ground layer. Okay. And then with our character, we want to add character controller. And we'll just do a box collider for now. Or I guess the character controller already has one, so. Here's what we'll do. Let's get rid of that box collider. Oh man, every time. I swear. 
Alright, so, just want to show off how this looks right now. On part two, we've got the water over there. It's a little, little resolution-y over there. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take that park model, and we're going to cut that that down just one peg. So it's gonna lose a little bit of our shape, but it is gonna save us a lot in processing power. We lost a little bit of water too. That's a shame. So now if we look around though, we can look back there. We're not. Oh, we still get a little resolution -y. We'll see. Who knows? It could be our, our dang B hover script. It could be this. I don't even know. It could be our B. Alright. So on that, we want to add. So I think what I want to do is I want to make a little trigger collider that's going to touch the ground from a certain distance. So for your first flight, you'll be able to raise up with a, you know, a height meter so that you can only have so much of. Otherwise, you get stuck hovering down at a certain height from the ground. I guess another way we could do that is we could literally just make a box collider. Put it down here. Or, or, you know, take our capsule collider and pop it down here. But um, let's go into our movement script. So we'll get out of Blender and Unity. We're going to open Visual Studio. Call this our flight script. And a good thing to always do before you start any new movement script is take a look at your old movement scripts and see if they could help you in any way. <coughs> Just thinking. I think for now, the best one to use would be this guy right here. So take, we'll go right in here, grab up all that. So basically what this does is it takes in the inputs from your AWSD or whatever you have plugged in and then it takes that, gets a direction from it. We also have our camera that is kind of floating around us. We want to take that into consideration. So this is going to help move that uh, and this is also going to apply some gravity so that we drop down to that point to that box collider essentially so in this one in terms of things that you will need
Need the character controller. Take these guys. Grav equals negative 9.81 float. And just making sure there's not anything else I need from that. <coughs> So this will at least get us moving around. So we'll set our, this to our character controller. So we'll save our flight script and go into Unity, see if we have any errors. And they're showing up right now. Close out Vision Studio. So remember we want to add this to our character, which has the character controller, not the B, which is just a graphics, a piece of graphics. So our, our speed will set to 20 and for our camera we want to set that to our main camera and our character controller we just want to drag that in so now we're gonna drop and we can fly around aha Sweet. That works pretty well. So a couple things we'll want to do to our camera is we'll want to add a box collider to it. We can actually do that pretty easily. And that way we won't go into the objects. We'll add bees do not like water, at least from what I have determined. So we will add this into a danger zone. I think the map needs to be a little bit bigger. And then if we just look at our scene wise and look at our character B, you can see that it's actually our capsule collider up here that stopped us on the ground. So say I took our character and jumped him up real high. Might not be able to, their, their position might be stuck right now. But uh Let's go in. Because another thing I could do is I could just make that capsule collider a little bit taller because I'm not going to have that be our like hit collider. So I think I'm just going to do that. So we'll remove this box. just make ourselves a little bit bigger so there we go we've got a little bit more height off the ground and then we will change it so that, that gravity is only being applied when we're not trying to fly up but if you can see here we can also go up this hill down the hill again it's cutting through because we just haven't had that out of that box collider so let's do that now so we'll go into our our camera CM free look we want to add components or add extension and we want a collider collide against We'll just set default, transparent layers. So we want to pull the camera forward is our strategy. And we'll add a little bit of smoothing time. <clears throat> and a bit of damping. So now, when we hit the ground, just select anything but 
now when we hit the ground, our camera is going to pull forward like that. Instead of try and dip into anything that is around. So we can take that and, and I just want to add a little bit more smoothing time to that. Say so we're up here. Looks like it's doing it quite abruptly. Yeah, that was pretty abrupt. I'm gonna Give this a try. Okay, so it takes a little while there, but uh, it gets you there. <laughs> so we'll set that to just a little bit lower. <clears throat> Sorry, the, hit, uh, the reason I'm going up the hill is I just know it's the easiest place to do it. I still want it to snap there. I just want it to do it smoothly, guy. Just a bee going up and down a hill. Okay, for now we'll call that good. Set that radius a little bit. This will give us a little bit of height. Oh, look at our shadow. That's kind of nice. Okay. 
we want to add our rotation script. I have a, a good little rotate script that I like to use. We're going to save this as... Going to save the bees assets scripts rotate. Going to Unity. Not turn it off. Nice. So now we got a rotate script. So we're gonna take our directional light. First things first, we're just gonna move it up a little bit. Rotation to it. Turn it on the X or axis. So that should give us a bit of day and night cycle now. You can see the shadows pretty well. Shine to it, which is kind of nice. Yeah, so, first thing I think I want to do is I want to make the park just slightly bigger. I think size wise, it could be a seven. See what that looks like. A little bit more open. Get to the top up here. So we're gonna put a big tree up here that's got like our first hive. So that'll be kind of you have to get up in the hive by using your. You're floating. I want to make a new water texture. Cause I, I at least want to make a blue one because I don't like that one over there. I did try and make it yellow greenish. So we'll start off with this. So see how it looks when we float over it, if you like it. Give some very interesting interactions with the edges here. I'm just trying to think in terms of size. It did not take a very long time to get over this thing. So the park. Let's make that a 10.
actually a 15. takes a decent amount of time to get over there. So one thing I want to add to my B itself is we'll open up Blender and we're going to open our B. What was the change I had in here? Let's <clears throat> make sure nothing wackadoodle happened there just now. So I still have that weird. Well, that's kind of cool, honestly. And we'll add we'll add some stuff underneath this water. We'll we'll need to make this bit deeper, but we'll have to actually select out that bit of the model, and cut into it essentially. Okay. And let's see. We wanted to open up our B. And in this guy, I just wanted to add some not a torus. Spheres. Kind of squash down a little bit. Okay, so that is Icosphere 1 and this is Cube 2. So we want to tie I Icosphere 1 into the hierarchy. Oh no. Into Cube 2. Which is this guy. So now, if we play that animation, So hopefully this doesn't mess with our object too much. If it does, we can always go back. So then while we're moving, all right, there we go. So let's just save that and, and 
hope to goodness that it doesn't mess up our bee. Because sometimes parenting up objects will really wonk you up. something there. So I want to make a new shader that is going to be to be transparent to pollen. Let's take a look at that. I think actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to unparent that. I'm going to duplicate it and get it on the other side. So I can turn these on and off as we, uh, you know, get flowers and whatnot. That over the X global. Okay. Oh shoot! I'm not in Blender. All right, I'll show you what I'm doing. That. <laughs> I had a nickel. Oh. Alright, so we're going to save these. 
but they won't come with our animation for now. dipped on these boys and we can add a, a little texture later that'll be <clears throat> as we're falling so let's see what this looks like right now honestly they just kind of wiggle within it So what we can do is we'll, we'll start with, depending on which side you're on, uh, first thing you'll do is get, get the front left leg. And if we kind of look in here, you can see how it's kind of moving in and out of it. But for now, I think it, it works just fine. It, it's really just the front one that just needs to go forward a little bit. So actually, I'm just gonna do that. So we'll take our, our model. Yeah, that's what's gonna be our problem in our animation. So we'll take our model. Let's take Icosphere 4 and 5. And we're gonna move them just back a little bit. Get that saved and we'll pop into Unity. So we can see what it looks like to have our little little pollen lags flying around. So that way you'll know if you have any on you. And I'll eventually learn how bees work <laughs> and what they do with pollen. I know they get it from flowers, and they might take it to other flowers, or maybe they make the pollen. I don't. Oh. What is your job, huh? And if we take a look at those front guys, it looks like they're at least a little bit better within the little zone there. And this will do on our character, on our flight script. So let's open up Visual Studio. Get Flight opened up. So let's get a private int current. Or, or this will be our pollen. So, pollen equals zero to start. And we want to add in All right, we'll make these public so we can drag them in. So we're going to be front right front left, mid right, mid left, back right, and back left. These are our legs, or the pollen pieces that we're going to attach to them. Say if we'll do a switch statement on pollen Alright. 
a six, we want to I guess we'll do case one. And we're just gonna copy that. So for now, this will just turn them on. It won't actually turn them off. But they're all going to be... inactive to start with. And default... We're just gonna we're gonna turn them all off. And then we want to say wait on This is going to be on trigger enter, actually. Could you imagine if I just killed the flower after, <laughs> after you got it? That'd be kind of funny. Alright. We're just gonna... So we'll need to create a flower. So let's go back into Unity real quick. Oh, I forgot to change my switch statement values to be according. Whoops, just forgot one little break statement. 
Alright. So now we want to go into our character script. And we want to pick our Ico spheres properly so that we can get them turned on. So, this is going to be mid left. Ico Sphere 1 is mid left. Ico Sphere 1 is mid right. Three is back left. is four. Thin little pipe. My goodness, stop deselecting. <clears throat> and then let's just make a crappy little leaf. Just giving it some odd shape here. 
gonna be a really crappy flower to start with but the idea will be there Just want a little bit more scale. down a little bit more like that. We'll 
rotate it after we get the last few added on. These crash my game. Everything but the pole. Let's take cylinder one, deselect that. We'll go like that, and we will save that as flower one. A little basic, but. That way we can make sure that we are collecting pollen along the way. So let's get Unity opened up. Looks like I gotta go, so I will see you later. Have a good one.